Uy. Espera, mae, espera, mae. Am I audible? Okay. Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for joining for today's discussion. We'll begin our discussion for today. Uh, we are reading from first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam and today's discussion will be from 18th chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, beginning with prayers and then we'll take a look into this chapter, which is a very, very important and a very beautiful chapter uh, in terms of cultural engineering, etiquettes and also for personal application, how we should live our life and also in terms of uh, um, you know, our devotional life, how we should become a good listener, uh, how should become more dependent on Krishna, etc., etc. Some very important lessons are shared in this. <coughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam namas kritya naram chevanarutamam devin saraswatim vyasam Tatujayam udirayat Nashtra praesha vadreshu nityam bhagvata sevaya Bhagvati uttama shloke bhakte bhavati nashtaki Krishna yavasu devaya devaki nandanayacha Nanda Gopa Kumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Yananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Venatasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Shemate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesh Shanyavadi Vashatai Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishna, Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gota Se Namaha Vanchakalpatarubhyasya Vipasandhubhya Evacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinabandhu Jagatpate Gopesh Gopika Kant Radha Kant Namastate Tapta Kanchanagorangi Radhe Vrinda Vanishwari Vrishabhano Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaubhaktarinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna so, reading from first canto, 18th chapter, and verse number one onwards. Before I begin, let me give you a very brief overview of this chapter, what this chapter talks about, and then we'll take a look into the details. So, in this chapter, more or less, three to four points are highlighted. And the first few set of verses up to let's say verse number eight to verse number nine, our Sutta Goswami sums up the discussion about Parikshit Maharaj's life, very briefly says that how he was cursed, uh, how he had to face death in seven days of time, how he took shelter of Sukhdev Goswami, etc., etc. And then he concludes it. 
once he concluded, it's in a very brief, he didn't go into the details of the curse and what all happened. So he kind of sums up the discussion in the first few verses. However, the Shanaka Dirishi are not happy. I would not say happy, not content is a better word. They wanted to know more and more in detail, not in summary. And then comes a very important and beautiful discussion about the qualities of a listener or a student and the quality of a speaker. Unfortunately, these days, the way the Kali Yuga is progressing, these days, so-called students, they order the teacher. They instruct the teacher. What should they do, what they should not do, how they should speak, what they should speak, etc., etc. Yes, you can uh, present the same idea in a different way. If you would like, if you wish, is a way of speaking, which represents humility. So it's a very disturbing age where people don't have an idea how we should interact, how we should deal. So that would be the subject matter about etiquettes. We will see about the qualities of the listener as well as qualities of a speaker. When, while Sutta Goswami is being glorified during this course of discussion from Shana Kadirishi, where they said they would like to listen and they glorify Sutta Goswami, then the third aspect in this chapter is how to face both criticism and glorification. Very, very important subject. And I feel this is something we face day to day in our life. How to face or deal with criticism and glorification is the third subject matter within this chapter. And then fourth is where Sutta Goswami goes into the detail of the story and then he begins to talk about uh, the situation, circumstances uh, that led to the cursing of Parishit Maharaj. And that's another very, very beautiful section. Uh, I would say that everybody should read it at least hundred of time. This particular section where Parishit Maharaj Srila Prabhupada writes, was put into an awkward situation by the Lord. So how do we react to an awkward situation would be one of the concluding discussion for today. There are two kinds of awkward situa situation we can be put into. One kind of awkward situation is where we are offended by others. It's an awkward situation. We feel insulted and greatly disturbed. And second awkward situation is where we commit aparad or where we offend others. So how do we react to this awkward situation? When we are offended, one way of reacting to is burst out in anger. And when we commit offense to others, then one way of reacting to the aparad or the offense that we have done to others is justification. Yes or no? Burst out with anger when we are affected. And when we affect others by our behavior or speech, then we defend ourselves by justifying our action. How did Parishit Maharaj do? Uh, Parishit Maharaj was the culprit who offended. Samik Rishi and Shingi were the victim party. How did they react when they were offended? And here we'll also make a discussion on the subject of narrow-mindedness and broad-mindedness. Of course, there are many, many things to discuss. Only thing is time is less. Uh, within a one hour or so, you cannot, cannot really do justice to this chapter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be a little bit like a freelancer. There's a difference between a paid employee and a freelancer. Paid employee has to follow the timings. A freelancer is a boss. So I'll be a boss today in, in the sense, I will discuss the content of my heart as much as I could discuss in the time. I'm not going to rush through this discussion because this is not meant to be rushed through. There's something very practical and important. So in the given frame of time, whatever we discuss, we discuss. Whatever remains behind, we discuss next time. <laughs> okay, so that's the that's more I'm gonna do it. Because I notice often I'm rushing through and I'm not able to go into details. Uh, Prabhu, can we zoom in? All right, so let's begin with the first verse. So here I'm not gonna read out the verses because it'll take a lot of time. I'll just read out the translation and I'll share the screen. So all of you can see the verses. So text number one, where Sutta Goswami said, Due to the mercy of the personality of God at Shri Krishna, who acts wonderfully, Parikshit Maharaj, though stuck by the weapon of the son of Drona in his mother's womb, could not be burned. Can we have this light? I'm getting a little less light here. I have more light for seeing. So, is the screen visible? Veda base? Yeah. That's the first verse, Sutta Goswami says, talks about, uh, huh? Oh, okay. Hare Krishna. Just one second, devotees. 
just make some changes for the devotees who are sitting here. Yeah. Due to the mercy of the personality of Godhead, repeating it again, Shri Krishna who acts wonderfully, Parishit Mahad was stuck by the weapon of the son of Drona and his mother's womb could not be burnt. So here the greatness of the birth of Parishit Maharaj is reiterated but the question should arise. Why? All of you sit here. Nobody puts, uh, nobody sits with the backrest. All of you young people. Come in front, please. Uh, what was I saying? Why, uh, why Sutta Goswami is reiterating or rather repeating about the birth? How did Parishit Maharaj took birth? That has already been spoken about. So Prabhupada writes in the purport. If you see the last line, highlighting that portion, Sutta Goswami was equally anxious to describe Parishit Maharaj. Hey, wait a second. Text number one, right? Ah. Hmm. Uh, why I feel something is missing here? Okay, this is the line actually. Sutta Goswami was equally anxious to describe Parishit Maharaj's wonderful birth and death, and this was stated by Sutta Goswami to increase the interest of the sages of Naima Sharnia. So why did Sutta Goswami repeat it? He just wanted to reignite the enthusiasm uh, in his listeners on the subject matter of Parishit Maharaj to remind them that how Parishit Maharaj was saved in the womb by the Lord, by Lord Shri Krishna. Text number two, as I said, the first initial verses are concluding, uh, summing up the discussion about Parishit Maharaj's life. Text number two, furthermore, Parishit Maharaj was always consciously surrendered to the personality of Godhead. Therefore, he was neither afraid nor overwhelmed by fear due to the snake word which was to bite him because of the fury of a Brahmana a boy. So it's interesting, uh, Prabhupada in the purport focuses on Narayana Parayana. You know, Narayana Parayana means one who is fully surrendered to the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality God. At such a person, Lord Shiva tells Pavati in the sixth canto, uh, the Chitta Ketu Mahas section, where it comes, Narayana, what is that? Uh, uh, uh -huh. Narake Shupitulyata. Narayana Parasarve Nakutshashani. No, 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 what's the first line? First line I'm missing. Narayana para. What's the first line again? Naswarga. Ha. No, no, that's another verse. That's another verse. That's uh, Chittaketumaha speaks. So, okay, thank you, thank you, Mother. Narayana para sarveshu na kutashchati na bibhati na swarga pavargeshu api tulyahata darshina. He sees as an equal vision both. Anyways, let's go back to the discussion. So here I have a question for all of you. Prabhupada says he was not fearful. Uh, he was surrendered to the Lord. Uh, and I'm raising this question to all of you to think about it. And maybe we can have a discussion at the end of the session. If he was fearless and he knew he has a seven days to live, then he could have gone and performed Nirjan Bhajan could have gone into the seclusion and chanted the holy names of the Lord incessantly, isn't it? However, as you know, Parishit Maharaj went out and he took shelter of the sages. Why? Even I have a question, I'm asking all of you also. Think about it, we'll discuss at the end of the session, right? Prabhupada is saying here, he was fully sheltered. Going back to text number three, let's take a look at text number three. After leaving all his associates, the king surrendered himself as a disciple to the son of Vyasa. He took shelter of Sukhdev Goswami, and thus he was able to understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead. And at last he gave up his material body on the bank of the Ganges. This is something very astounding, amazes me when we study about the history, about the lives of these great personalities. Even a great personality, Narayana Parayana, Parikshit Maharaj had to take shelter of Guru. He had, to go, he had to accept Sukhdev Goswami as a spiritual master. Why? What's the need for it? And this was answers. You can only understand the actual position of the personality of Godhead when you have surrendered to Guru. So here comes the lesson number one. Surrender to spiritual master is a prerequisite to understand the supreme personality of Godhead. 
I'll repeat again, very important. These days people say, why we need Guru? We can read Bhagavad Gita by ourselves. We can understand Krishna. What is the purpose? And even those who understand or who take shelter of Guru, what is the level of our surrender to Guru or to Guru's instruction? So to prerequisite to understand Krishna is surrender to the spiritual master. And that is the essence of the purport. If you read it out, you will find out. That's what Prabhupada emphasizes. Moving forward, text number four. And then Sutta Goswami says, so what happens? Uh, oh no, the text number four actually Sutta Goswami talks about how did Parishit Maharaj became fearless at the face of death. Text number four says so. Very beautiful verse. Maybe we can recite along. Nottama shloka vartana jushatam tat katham ritam sya sambramanta kale pi smaratam tat padam bhujam why and how Parishad Mahat became fearless? Because he dedicated, in other words, he said, because those who have dedicated their lives to the transcendental topics of the personality of Godhead and who are constantly engaged in remembering the lotus feet of the Lord do not run the risk of having misconceptions even at the last moment of their life. Now, this is something, again, a very, very important subject matter. Uh, this has been my recent theme for the Sunday evening discussion. Uh, when the crisis hits us, or when we are put into an awkward situation uh, by the will of destiny, will of providence, either way, then sometimes devotees get a doubt in their mind. Is Krishna consciousness working? Is Krishna really protecting me? And here something very nice is mentioned. Two things are mentioned here. Who would never run into doubts if two things are matched? What is that? Let's take a look at the translation again. Those who have dedicated their lives to the transcendental topics of the Supreme Personality God, dedicated. Second, who are constantly engaged in remembering the lotus feet of the Lord. Two things who have dedicated their lives for hearing, chanting, glorifying and who constantly engage in remembering the lotus feet of the Lord. They never run any risk of having misconceptions even at the last moment of their lives. Sometimes Hare Krishna. So sometimes um, I would say you know, when a, somebody picks up to Krishna consciousness, uh, it is seen, I don't know, I can't, I can't quantify it, but it is often seen for a good amount of time, or maybe you can say for several lifetimes maybe, where the nature of our surrender, because this all happens when we surrender to Guru. Surrender to Guru reveals you the actual position of the Supreme Personality Godhead. Rupa talks about it. Uh, let's take a look at the purport. Prabhupada makes something very important point here. And here it is. Prabhupada says, there is no gain in hearing the Vedic hymns from some mental speculator. When the same is heard from an actual self-realized soul and is properly understood by service and submission, everything becomes transcendentally clear. This is your lesson number two today for today. How to surrender by service and by submission. Now, what is the nature of our surrender in general? What is seen in the society? The nature of our surrender is, in general, we have a nature of pick and choose. You know, when it comes to our surrender, we'll accept whatever mind agrees to or acknowledges to. And whatever mind does not acknowledge or agrees to, we reject it. How many of you have that experience in your life? Interestingly, when you see the surrender of Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita, in 10th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna says, when he says, Param Brahma, Param Dhamma, Pavitra, Midam Bhavan, Purusham, Shashvatam, Divyam, Adi, Deva, Majavimam. When he declares that you are the Supreme Personality God, at two verses down the line, Arjuna says something very profound. He says, My dear Lord, I accept you entirely as you have explained me. And there we make a point when we discuss this particular section of the verse that a lot of time, in fact, 
all the time. People have this pick and choose mentality. Even while they study Bhagavad Gita, they'll accept certain things and they'll reject certain things because it does not suit their mental frame. However, the surrender is not complete because Arjuna himself said, what is complete surrender? I accept whatever Krishna says. Similarly, in our lives, we'll see uh, the level of a surrender. Okay, 16 hours Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we'll chant. Because Prabhupada did not make a rule that you have to chant 16 hours in the morning, but he made it as a prescription. Prescription is voluntary. Rule is to be followed. Because he made it literally like a prescription, so people chant at any time of the day. Prabhupada did not make a vow to read his books every day. So people hardly read these days. And what to speak about hearing. We all have this experience, isn't it? So our surrender is not complete. Our surrender is not complete. Our surrender to Guru is not there. There is no chances of us being freed from the doubt. And that's the point here. Who constantly engage in remembering the lotus feet of the Lord and dedicating their life to the transcendental topic. Only then by the grace of the Lord, and by his bona fide devotees, one can get this opportunity without difficulty. These are proper statements, the last two or three lines of the purport. Without any great difficulty, they can always continue to remember the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And like this, we all have our own roadblocks in surrender. And that's why it is a journey. Text number five, where now Sutta Goswami says, under Parishit Mahajul, Kali could never flourish. Because he was such a uh, great uh, ruler that he drove away the Kali. And text number 6 talks about the very day and moment Supreme Personality of Godhead left this earth, Kali personified entered and all kind of irreligious activities began to happen in this world. And Prabhupada gives a very beautiful purport. Please mark it as a five-star purport. And Prabhupada says, how you can save yourself from the influence of Kali? Two things. One, we are fortunate if we have a king like Parishad Maharaj or the ruler like Parishad Maharaj who would ensure uh, there is no place, there is no liquor shops, there is no prostitution homes, gambling places, anything. I mean, unfortunately, in the last two to three years, at least where I am in Pune, based out of Pune in Maharashtra, I am amazed. I have never seen so many liquor shops uh, as we get to see today. Even around temple, yesterday only when we were coming out from the temple coming to Njavadi, uh, I was just looking outside and I saw some big shop. To me, it looked like a big grocery store or a shopping mall. And they were all bottles, bottles, bottles. So I thought these are some juice bottles. So when I looked from the bottom to the top, as my eyes were scrolling through, and when I looked at the top, it was written, what was it written? Janu Vai shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I understood, oh, these are not juice bottles, these are soma juice. These are different juice bottles which are kept there for different categories of people. And around and that road only, there are now five to six shops like this, big, big shops. I want to speak about Hinjavadi where there's so much youth and corporates lives, there's so many big. So if you don't have a ruler like him, ruler like Prashit Maharaj, so Purpat 6, text 6, Purpat, Purpat mentions, what we can do at our level to drive away the Kali's influence. So Prabhupada says, here you will see that from the purport. If there is an arrangement for the constant chanting, this is lesson number three, how to save ourselves from the influence of Kali, of the holy names and qualities of the Supreme Lord, there is no chance at all for the personality of Kali to enter. Whenever a new congregation picks up, or you know, when I'm guiding or training a new congregation, I the first thing, one of the first things that I generally advise them when they ask me, if they ask me, uh, you know, what can we do, you know, to progress in Krishna consciousness, the very first thing I always tell them, should get Srila Prabhupada's Japa box, and keep it either <coughs> keep it either in the kitchen or in your drawing room, and let it play 24 by 7. In the daytime, you can raise the volume so that you are able to hear something. And in the nighttime, make it feeble because as the night begins and when sounds become more muted all around, the sound of Java could be a little more louder. So mute it, not mute it, make it a little more feeble. But Srila Prabhupada's chanting should always be there. Prabhupada mentions here, how do you want to drive away the Kali's influence as shown in the purport? Uh, Prabhupada says, if there is an arrangement for the constant chanting of the holy names and qualities, there is no chance at all for the personality of Kali to enter. 
So sometimes people ask, what do we do when a person is about to pass away, depart away? This is one of the things that we should immediately do. We should put uh, Srila Prabhupada chanting box or Kirtan next to him so the person is able to hear. Ether gets purified, the environment gets purified and the consciousness gets purified. Similarly for the mother who is pregnant, who is about to give birth, compulsory this should be practiced where we have a constant chanting. Of course, we cannot do it for outsiders, but for those who are serious about practicing devotional life or taking to Krishna consciousness. Next, Prabhupada says, this is the technique of driving away the personality of Kali from this world. And then Prabhupada says, in modernized human society, the great advancements of material science have then invented the radio to distribute a sound in the air. They should stop distributing nonsense and replace it with spiritual sound vibration. That's what the Prabhupada says. So how do we defeat Kali? We defeat Kali by ensuring that there is a 24 by 7 propagation of or the sound vibration of Krishna consciousness being propagated all around. Going to text number 7. Now this is a very important shloka. Uh, there are two shlokas which I would highly recommend all of you to learn. And one of them is this text number 7. Oftentimes we hear Kali Yuga is like this, Kali Lagna is like that, Kali Yuga has filled with so many problems. But text number 7 says no. Parishit Maharaj did not kill Kali Yuga because he saw one thing good in Kali Yuga. And only a pure devotee like Kali Yuga, a pure devotee like Parishit Maharaj can see. Just like only the Supreme Personality Godhead Balaram could only find something good in Duryodhan, which even Krishna did not see. <laughs> you know? So it really takes a very great person or personality to find something good. And there's something very good. So we have a great news for all of you. For all of you are very fortunate to be born in Kali Yuga. Otherwise, we generally say we are unfortunate to be born in Kali Yuga. But trust me, we are very fortunate to be born in Kali Yuga. Why? This was says. Please repeat after me. Nanudveshti Kalim Samrat Nanudveshti Kalim Samrat Saranga Eva Sarabha Saranga Eva Sarabha Kushlaniya Shusidhyanti Kushlaniya Shusidhyanti Naitrani Kritaniya Naitrani Kritaniya Nanudveshti Kalim Samrat Parishad Maharaj Nanudveshti Dveshti Dveshti means envious. He did not become envious of Kali. Saranga Eva Sarabuk. Why? Saranga is also refers to bees, honey collector from the flowers. Sarabuk because Parishamaha vision was to collect the essence. And what was the essence from this Kali Yuga or from Kali personality? The last two lines. What is the benefit? What is the benefic- benediction of this Kali Yuga? Kushlani Ashu Siddhyanti. Kushlani Ashu Siddhyanti. As, as soon as somebody performs, uh, you know, a good act, not performs actually. As soon as even one thinks about doing good, he gets a benefit. Naitrani kritani yat. But unless one performs a sinful act, he does not get a reaction. In other words, up to the upper yoga, if you thought impiously, if you had wrong desires, if you thought bad about others, you would get a reaction. If that rule had to be applicable today, I am not sure about any one of you, but I would not be sitting in this body. I would have been burned to ashes long ago because the nature of the mind is such. How many of you think? Burned to ashes long ago? Probably by teenage years. By teenage years, we were enough corrupted to be burned to ashes. We are also not so much different from Shangi in one sense. We will come and talk about Shangi's state of mind in a short while. So that's the benediction which is given in this. Let's move forward. Text number eight, Glory of Kali Yuga. So this is your lesson number. How many lessons we took so far? Okay, whatever lesson number. Lesson number two. So that's the glory. That's lesson number three for today. The glory's advantages. A very important purport. Prabhupada gives several advantages of Kali Yuga. Please read it out. And then text number eight. Who are the victims of Kali Yuga? This is very interesting again. It is said, Parishit Maha said, Parishit, not said, Parishit, Sutta Goswami is describing, Parishit Maha considered that less intelligent men might find the personality of Kali to be very powerful. But those who are self-controlled would have nothing to fear. So, who are the victims of Kali Yuga? Who are the victims of Kali Yuga? Those who do not have self-control. Mm-hmm. जो बेचारे बैठे-बैठे भी गिरते रहते हैं, 
we cannot, they find it so difficult to stay awake. Only time they are awake, fully conscious is when the prasadam is being served. So, self-controlled would have nothing to fear. And that is the point is mentioned here. The question comes, how to become self-controlled? And that is lesson number five for today, if I'm correct, right? Or four, whatever it is going on in the sequence. So, Prabhupada mentions how to become self-controlled. Srila Prabhupada gave the process. Uh, how to become self-controlled? Morning program, evening program. Get up early in the morning, is the process of becoming self-controlled? Now, for you to get up in the morning and chant without falling asleep, and you know, hear Krishna Katha or hear Srimad Bhavatam class, attend the whole morning program, you know, you must have slept early in the night. And you're sleeping early in the night, which means self-control, you're not wasting your time. So evening program, morning program, and then uh, where does the Kali reside? What was the fifth place that Parishat Mahas gave to Kali? So see, for a devotee's life, the fourth thing doesn't exist. There is no intoxication, there is no gambling, there is no illicit sex, there is no meat eating. So how could Kali exist in the life of devotees? Yes, Kali can exist in the lives of devotees also. Wherever there is hoarding of money. So the hoarding of money does not happen, Prabhupada said, give charity. And Prabhupada described how much charity should be there. All of you know about 50% monthly thing, but of course it may not be possible in today's day and time. Everyone should compulsory do monthly thing. We should understand this. We cannot think I'm saving my money for my old parents, I'm saving my for retirement, etc. You're not saving for anything, you're saving a place in your home for Kali to reside or Kali to reside. We have enough excuses uh, not to follow. As you said, what is shelter means, what is surrender means? to follow entirely. We cannot pick and choose uh, the instruction of Guru. And that is what Srila Prabhupada said. And this is how we can become self-controlled. Text number nine, where now uh, Sutta Goswami concludes, O oh, sages, whatever you have asked me, I have told you about Parishit Maharaj, etc. Et like this. And tenth, those uh, who desire us of achieving complete perfection in life must submissively hear all topics that are connected with the transcendental activities and the qualities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. After this, Sutta Goswami stopped speaking. And now the sages began to speak. Something very interesting. Very beautiful was how the, how the sages spoke to Sutta Goswami. Rishyauchuhu. This is text number 11. Sutta Jeeva Sama Somya Shashvatir Vishadam Yashaha Yastvam shamsasi krishnasya mrityanam amratam hina. The sages said, May you live many years and have eternal fame, for you are speaking very nicely about the activities of Krishna, the personality of Godhead. This is just like nectar for mortal beings like us. So here now discussion will happen about the qualities of a speaker and qualities of a listener. The quality of listener, the foremost quality of listener is attentiveness. And that attentiveness comes from eagerness. I want to hear. I want to hear. Now, somehow it is seen as we are progressing. Let me make this, maybe this is a little controversial statement, but let me make it, let me help you understand this. How many of you agree when we first came to Krishna consciousness and when there used to be dancing kirtans, there used to be wild dancing. We used to dance out wildly. And so-called senior, when we became, to that degree, our body and head became heavy. Now people had to push us, dance. And we're like, mm, nay, nay, neopites, let neopites dance. Let, let the new people dance. And we'll stand in the side, shake our Yes, we have that experience. I mean, all of us would have had some experience like that. Similar. If not, you're fortunate enough to continue to be a pure devotee yet. All right. In the beginning, everyone actually acts on the platform of pure devotee, highly respectful and everything. How many have noticed in the beginning, you know, when you, uh, you know, you have understood and you're taking it nicely, you're very eager for hearing classes also. If there's a class time, you rush for the class. Everything looks fantastic. There is a, you know, there's a very sincere heart. Oh, let me ask this question to all of you. Let's say somebody would like to ask, what happens after a few years? Things become boring. Oh, it is repetitive. Do you think the sages and Amasharian didn't knew what Sutta Goswami is speaking about, the story of Parishit Maharaj? They're of that era. 
how they would not have heard. And if Sutta Goswami has to speak about, let's say, Parsuram, let's talk about Rishadev, Dharo Maharaj, do you think the Sutta Goswami, uh, Sonakadi Rishis would be hearing for the first time? They did not study in a CBS in ICC school. They were not educated, foolish people. They were highly educated. They have read all the scriptures. So my question is, yet they are deriving such a great pleasure. And my one word answer is, somehow we make ourselves very complicated. We get caught up into too many factors. To be enthusiastic, simplicity of heart is the foremost quality. I'll repeat again. To be enthusiastic in Krishna consciousness, simplicity and no sense of heart is the foremost quality, which unfortunately, of course, we didn't have it. We had a glimpse of it when we came to Krishna consciousness, where we saw everyone as Prabhu and Mataji. But later on, we develop a convoluted ideas where we think we are Prabhu and others are Das. I am seniors, others are my servant, others should serve me, and if others do not give me respect as I expect, we become offended, disturbed, and that the whole mind becomes very politically oriented and is all about respect, disrespect, respect, disrespect, and Krishna goes out of the window. And that is why people find it difficult as we move on. Of course, this is not the situation which is supposed to be forever, but this is some situation which sometimes comes in the life of practice and devotees. So here on this context, we were talking about text number 11, eagerness, the quality of listeners is the eagerness. Eagerness comes from the simplicity of heart. That was the point I was making. And text number 12, very interesting verse, where Shonaka Adirishi says, Oh, Sutta Goswami, what to tell you? You see, we all have become black, not because of extra sun heat or because of sun tanning, because of performing this thousand year long sacrifice, the smoke that has produced from the fire sacrifice have only make us dark, have made us dark in complexion, have not done anything to us. But by listening to you, we have become purified. Text number 12. We have just begun the performance of this fruitive activity, a sacrificial fire, but we are without certainty of a result because of the many imperfections in our action. Our bodies have become black from the smoke but we are factually pleased by the nectar. And this brings us to the lesson number seven here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Something happened. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right. Sorry, there was a little technical disturbance here. Uh, so text number 12. Uh, what is going on? Hmm. So here in text number 12, this is what the sages are speaking about. And there's a very, very important purport. Uh, there are a lot of people who are very much interested in yajna, which means fire sacrifice, other ritualistic activities. But this purport makes it very clear what are the flaws in ritualistic activities. Please read out one of the flaws. The greatest flaw in the ritualistic activity is unqualified brahmanas. Uh, for example, I was making this point today morning also, and the point was as follows. It's a kum mela during Prabhupada's time, Allahabad kum mela, early morning, very cold. Uh, and devotees are struggling to perform Mangalati, etc. So this is after a few days, for the first time, Mangalati is being performed at 4.30, after Prabhupada became strict with his disciple. Prabhupada was sitting there, and Prabhupada was waiting for the lamp to be lighted up, and the disciple was again and again trying to you know, light up the lamp. As soon as he would light up the lamp, the breeze will come and blow it off. Six, seven times he failed, and Prabhupada was waiting and was, was kind of encouraging them, try more, try more, try more, and finally it didn't work out. Seven, eight times it failed, Prabhupada then said, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Eva Kevalam. Kalo Nashta, Eva Nashta, Eva Nashta, Eva Gataranatha. His own as Giriraj Maharaj talks about in his book, which he recently published. Uh, what is that about? I will build your temple. There, that, there in that book, in the very first chapter, His own as Giriraj Maharaj mentioned, he described this incident and gives a purport that Prabhupada, by quoting this verse, was making a point that in Kali Yuga, there is no other shelter than the holy names of the Lord. Now, as a practicing devotee, if if still we have our shelter other than the holy names of the Lord, different ritualistic processes, 
then how can we actually make a progress in Krishna consciousness? And then we see here the sages are actually saying we are performing all these ritualistic activities. The smoke has only made us black. But by hearing Krishna Katha for the first time, we have felt enlivened in our uh, this wow of performing thousand year yajna. Like that, the point is mentioned here in text number 12 and text number 13. Another very, very important shloka. This is the second of the important shloka that we would like to learn. So first shloka was about the glories of Kaliuga, and now text number 13. What is the value of sadhus association? Please repeat. Tulyam alave na pi na swargam na puna bhavam bhagvasangi sangasya mrityanakam mutashishaha Tulyam alave na pi. Somebody can get bhagvasangi sangasya association of devotee even for a moment. Lave naapi lava, even for a moment. Na swargam na punar bhavam for such a person who does not desire heavenly planets, does not desire liberation. Mrityanam ki mutashishaha, then what would he desire a worldly benediction that to living in the world of dead? While living into a mortal, while living into this mortal body which will die, which is perishable, why a devotee ever, ever? desire for any material gain when a devotee does not even desire moksha liberation but what is the desire to get the association of the devotees that's the value of sadhu sangha like that and here there is a very beautiful discussion which is lesson number eight there are two kinds of sanghas one is the yosis sangha and other is sadhu sangha or bhagavad sanghi Prabhupada mentioned so lesson number eight we have opportunity to take Sangha of Yosit or the Sangha of Bhagavat. Bhagavat means the Pasha, the devotees of the Lord. What are Yosit Sanghi? This is what you see in the paragraph in the purport here. I hope all of you are able to see. The material is called a Yosit Sanghi, a one who is too attached to woman and other paraphernalia. It's called Yosit, Yosit Sanghi, who is too attached to materialistic people or materialistic things. Such attachment. Prabhupada drives away the benedictions of life and prosperity. Please pay attention. All piety is removed from our life if we are in association with Yosis Sanghi. However, opposite to Yosis Sanghi is Bhagavad Sanghi, one who is always association of the Lord's name form qualities. And such association is always desirable. It is worshipable. It is praiseworthy. And one may accept it as the highest goal of life. Like that Srila Prabhupada says. So it looks like the screen is not visible now. I hope something would work out now with the changes. So that's how that's our lesson number eight, Yoshid versus Bhagavad Sanghi. And now text number 14. So now this is interesting discussion now. Text number 14. So here, first of all, Shranakadi Rishi is glorifying Sutta Goswami, saying that your association is so so important for us. And text number 14, uh, Sutta Goswami, Shana Kadirishi first speaks and they glorify Supreme Personality Godhead. They say the Personality Godhead Shri Krishna is an exclusive shelter for all living beings and his transcendental attributes. Prabhu's screen is not visible. I'm going to disconnect and do it. Shikhar Prabhu, can you show the screen uh, if you have that? Somewhere the technical glitch has happened here. Fine. Or else I have share screen option for my way. The ways I can show that what I'm reading. I hope all of you are able to see it now. This is what I'm reading. So, is the exclusive shelter for all living beings and his transcendental attributes cannot even be measured by such masters of mystic powers as Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma. Can anyone who is expert in relishing nectar rasa be ever be fully satiated by hearing topics about him? That's a very interesting discussion here. So, this verse will be repeated in the similar line. I'll take take a, I'll make a connection about it at that point of time. Going forward to text number 15, and here comes the discussion about the qualities of listeners and speakers. Text, uh, the lesson number 9 from text number 15. Tanno bhavan vai bhagavat pradhanu mahat mikanta parayanasya 
ಹರೇರುದಾರಂ ಚರಿತ ವಿಶುಧಂ ಶುಶ್ರೂತು ವಿದ್ವನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಪೇ ಅಟೆನ್ಶನ್ ದ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಸ್ನ ಶುಶ್ರೂಷತಾನ ವಿತ್ ನೋತು ವಿದ್ವನ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ನೌ ಓಕೆ ಐ ಸ್ಟಾಪ್ ಶೇರಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ do i need to do anything <laughs> seems like a camcorder went away okay i'll continue at least with what we are doing discussion until this is fixed so sharing the screen again so here something very interesting to mention first of all the quality of a listener sush shushru shatam shushru shatam means the listener should be very eager should be uh, you know eager to hear about the subject matter shila prabhupad in one of his uh, conversation as well as in uh, lectures he mentioned about how does this whole uh, krishna katha happens when there is a receptive audience and you will see in the purport of this particular verse also when there is a receptive audience then parmatma within the speaker inspires him to speak which will benefit the audience so if anything good speaker speaks what the audience felt like oh this was fantastic actually there is something to their credit also they were so eager to hear the parmatma sitting in their heart inspired the parmatma in the heart of the speaker to speak that particular message which invoked the sense of feeling now what is the quality of a speaker does it mean any speaker uh you know the parmatma in anyone's heart will inspire him to speak like this so the quality of the speaker should be bhagavat pradhano mahat tama ekant parayanasya which means he should not have any other shelter for the speaker the quality of a speaker is he should not have any other shelter except for the supreme personality of godhead so quality of speaker means ekant parayanasya his only shelter exclusive shelter is lord shri krishna and uh, for speaker should be receptive they should be eager for example let me give an example uh, his holiness haldar swami maharaj was here recently and i would highly recommend listening to his classes which he recently gave at iskon pune on the subject matter of sharanagati surrender sharanagati that's what we have discussed so far so there maharaj was making a point in delhi one of the devotee was speaking to him and he said oh, maharaj you know this is going bad with me that is going bad with me all that so i show, showed my hand to astrologer they said do this kriya that kriya and he said when i went to my spiritual master to ask what should i do should i follow this ritualistic activities or what should i do so then the spiritual master said no only chant hare krishna so there uh, his own haldar swami maharaj was making a point he said this is what it means to be guru who has taken exclusive shelter to of krishna and who teaches about exclusive shelter to krishna to others also he didn't wanted to waste his time disciples time in going here and there of course uh, there could be situations where we might have to for example it's not that when you have viral fever uh, you are supposed to recommend the sick person chant hare krishna your viral fever will go away right there has to be practicality but this is not a general statement to be made that okay if anything goes here and there you can go to this ritualistic activity that activity it has to be case to case basis but in this particular devotee situation he was more mental about being factual so the spiritual master said no you just you just chant that's an important thing for example let me give another example uh bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur actually had uh in his temples even the deities of devdas first of all foremost is ganeshi and lord shiva now when it came to shila prabhupa shila prabhupa did not establish any uh lord shiva temple or any temple of ganeshi within his con right and it is described for lord shiva is vaishnava naam yatha shambhu so why he didn't do it you know so bhakti siddhanta sri thakur did with an understanding is vaishnava naam is best for the devotees why in the case of uh shila popa didn't do it because shila popa saw the people today of this age are already very confused they don't know what is right and wrong to avoid any further confusion from their life shila popa made it simple so that they understand it so that they don't get distracted about it so this is time place circumstances the quality of a speaker is ekant parayanasya dedicated surrender to the supreme personality godhead all right moving forward now uh to text number 16 
So what is the advantage of being becoming an attentive listener? If somebody becomes an attentive listener, what advantage would they get? So here, Shona Kadiri, she quotes an example of Parishit Maharaj. And they say, see, just like Parishit Maharaj, text number 16, just like Parishit Maharaj, just by listening about the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the son of Vyasadeva, he received the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That's text number 16. And text number 17, then he makes a plea or request, kindly, kindly narrate on the pastimes of the unlimited for their purifying and supreme. And now comes 18 to 23 verses. So now from 11th verse to 17th verse, Shonaka Rishi was speaking to Sutta Goswami, where they glorified Sutta Goswami. They thanked Sutta Goswami for this wonderful narration. And they glorified Sutta Goswami by saying that we have been performing this fire smoke yajna you know we are performing this yajna for so long only thing that we have got is smoke but because we started hearing from you we feel so greatly relieved in our life please continue and then they glorify the association of sadhus how great is a sadhus association that people forget about even moksha so being glorified now this is the second uh, subject third subject matter of this chapter how did our uh, Sutta Goswami responded. So rest of the chapter, as I said in the beginning, now there's a discussion on how to reciprocate when you are glorified. And then when Parikshit Maharaj's case will be discussed, how to reciprocate when you feel you are insulted. Both the subject matter will be seen in this chapter. So let's take a look, text number 18. So Sutta Vacha. Beautiful verse, maybe we can recite it. Text number 18. Sutta Vacha Aho Vayam Janma Brato Adhyasma Vradhan Vratyapi Viloma Jataha Now Sutta Goswami, uh, to whom, from whom, more than 80,000 sadhus, the best of the sadhus, are listening, Harikatha. He is the chief of all these great yogis, rishis and munis. How did the Sutta Goswami, just for your information, Sutta Goswami was not born in a Brahmanika family. He was born to a mixed caste. And this is something very interesting which Sutta Goswami, uh, you know, speaks about himself at the foremost. He says, Oh God, although we are born in a mixed caste, we are still promoted in birthright simply by serving, simply by serving and following the great who are advanced in knowledge. Even by conversing with such great souls, one can without delay cleanse oneself of all disqualification resulting from lower birth. And that brings us to lesson number 11. Now, how to handle glorification of the discussion? Now, so not lesson number 11, lesson number 10 here. First of all, there is a lot of emphasis had been given in the Kali Yuga. Uh, on the birthright. Chanakya Pandit had to fight during his time. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at his time, then Rupa Goswami, then Narottam Das Thakur, in their time, then Bhakti Nod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Sri Thakur, and then Srila Prabhupada. If Srila Prabhupada was criticized for one thing, let me give an example again. Srila Prabhupada, uh, 1972, decided to come back to India. Of course, he came before also, but he wanted to now actively do things in India. So 1972, when he came uh, to Bombay, uh, he was living in the house of a very big businessman. But before Prabhupada came, two weeks prior to that, almost 30 odd devotees, 30 devotees from America, hand-picked, were brought to India to help Prabhupada in Indian preaching mission. So it was a great publicity. Harinam was going on almost every day. There was a press conference or whatnot. Big, big programs were happening in all different assemblies. However, after a short honeymoon period of this great success, then articles were being published or the comments of different uh, sadhus or uh, fanatic Hindus were published where they were saying, oh, uh, this is wrong, this is against the practice of Hinduism. How can you, the one who is born in Yavana and Malaysia family, how can you give, make him a Brahmana? That person is not even qualified to utter the name of the Lord. And this Swami Prabhupada is not only making them chant, he's making them speak on Bhagavad Gita. 
he has given him brahman diksha and for that purpose was criticized there was a very strong now the nobody knows anything about all this thing but until 50 years ago again that time there was a strong opposition of shila propad because of birthright and the very first line propad mentioned the purport suta goswami did not take his birth in a brahmana family he was born in a mixed caste so this is a very very important purport where two things are highlighted first is your birth your education your intelligence your beauty any of this material parameters does not count towards your krishna consciousness is irrelevant it does not matter the very famous example is as giriraj mahashears about kulakrit prabhu right kulakrit prabhu i fam remember correct name is he was called crazy peter he was so crazy so crazy that the police got fed up from that man and dropped him outside the iskon temple at boston if i am correct was boston dropped him outside the temple thinking that these people take any and every kind of hippie they have a free admission for hippies so we cannot handle this hippie who is a crazy fellow let us put this hippie outside iskon temple and he came sat inside he would always hold day lie down in the aisle and everyone began to complain about him because he had such a foul stench because he would, had not taken bath for almost 6 months not 6 hours 6 days 6 weeks 6 months you can imagine how stinking he would be always high because of the influence of the drugs and what not and when his own as giriraj maharaj i believe or his own as sasur maharaj either of them had written a letter to shila propa shila propa said tolerate give him time and 20 25 years later on his own as giriraj maharaj visiting texas dallas he was taking darshan radha kalachand ji and there right next to him there was this devotee was standing at that one time and he looked at him he felt like oh it seems to be familiar then he asked one of the local devotee in the temple who is this person and then devotee said he is that famous kulakrit prabhu kusha. kushakrit something was the name kushakrit prabhu who giriraj maharaj immediately recall kushakrit prabhu was that one devotee who went on to become a sanskrit scholar translated help shila propada in his writing assisted shila not help assisted shila propada in writing not only that who translated acharya's commentaries from sanskrit into english and who was that person he was that crazy peter who was even forsaken by the police the state administration had no hopes even that person we are educated we cannot memorize one shloka and that person crazy peter went on to become a sanskrit scholar that is a point about the birth it does not matter less less a number 10 and second thing proper mentions such is the power and potency of krishna conscious move, movement and therefore in this purport relating to the point of low birth proper says therefore the preaching mission everyone should preach what is the scarcity in today's society is lack of krishna consciousness and that is what proper talks about it proper makes a very beautiful point in the last paragraph and proper says the mental disease of the present generation we goranga i just lost my screen one second please the mental disease of the present generation are more acute than bodily diseases it is quite fit and proper to take up the preaching of shrimad bhagavatam all over the world without delay so that's how proper says mental disease means you know bodily identification only birth in a brahmana family makes you qualified to study shastra or to speak about shastra things like this and text number 19 again a beautiful verse the power of chanting the holy names of the glories of the lord katha puna granato nam tasya mahatme kant parayanasya यो अनंत शक्ति भगवान अनंतो महत गुरुत्वाय मनंत माहु एंड व्हाट टू स्पीक ऑफ दोस हु अंडर द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द ग्रेट डिवोटीज चैंटिंग द होली नेम ऑफ द अनलिमिटेड हु हैज अनलिमिटेड पोटेंसी द पर्सनालिटी गॉड हैड अनलिमिटेड पोटेंसी एंड ट्रांसेंडेंटल बैट्रीब्यूट्स इज कॉल्ड अनंत एंड टेक्स्ट नंबर 20 सो हियर first of all we are talking about now lesson number 11 uh, how to face or how to respond to glorification so if you see sutta goswami the very first verse he spoke about uh, talking about his humble birth making a point that i am not any qualified person then text number 19 he glorifies the supreme personality of godhead 
and now text number 20 and then we'll make two points upon the principle of humility text number 20 etha vatalam nanusuchite na gune asamya nati shayanasya hetvetaram pratyato vibhute yasyangri renum jushate anabhiposhaha it is now a certain the supreme personality god is unlimited and there is none equal to him consequently no one can speak of him adequately great demigods cannot obtain the favor of the goddess of fortune even by prayers but this very god has rendered service unto the lord although he is unwilling to have such service so the first two lines he actually talks about again he uh, you know he is another symptom of humility he says who can who can explain the lord's glories even even in the last two lines he says even lakshmi wants to serve the supreme personality of godhead so lesson number 11 there are two points i would like to make on the principle of humility uh, in relation to how to reciprocate to glorification or how a humble person or not a person how a humble devotee would reciprocate to glorification what will happen in the heart of a humble devotee the very first thing when a devotee is glorified the one who is really humble he would immediately remember the lord immediately remember the vaishnavas and the lord who have made him qualified for receiving all this glorification think about all of us individually what was our qualification before we met vaishnavas or before we received Srila Prabhupada's mercy was none so here the immediately Sutta Goswami recognizes his position and he says it's beyond me I am of mixed caste and it's beyond me to glorify the Lord that's great personality Godhead is even worshipped or Mother Lakshmi is eager to serve first thing second thing only a devotee can truly be humble now why only a devotee can truly be humble because only a devotee understands the greatness of the Lord and greatness of the devotees Amar Jeevan Sada Pape Rati. This is Bhakti Unotaku is saying. You know, the devotee who understands the greatness of the Lord and greatness of the devotees, in other words, only a devotee could be truly humble, and the sign, another symptom of it, uh, and the reason for it is because he understands the greatness of the Lord and greatness of the devotees. How many of you, does anyone of you have ever had an experience? You're attending an assembly of Vaishnavas and you're feeling so awkward uneasy you're feeling like oh what am i doing i'm complete unfit this is an assembly of such an esteemed wonderful vaishnavas i'm such a lowly person anyone of you had an experience please raise your hands we should always have this experience you should not say i had this experience when i first time came in krishna consciousness this should be we should have every time yes and that is what actually only a devotee can be truly humble so let's conclude this uh, we'll take one or two, uh, we'll go up to 23 and then i'll conclude for today's discussion and we'll take this chapter ahead text number 21 what happened next only krishna is supreme personality of godhead who can be worthy of the name of the supreme lord but krishna brahmaji collected the water emanating from the nails of his feet in order to award it to Lord Shiva as a worshipful welcome. This very water, the Ganges is purifying the whole universe, including Lord Shiva. This is something very important. For those of you who ever have to answer anything about demigods or Devta worship, you can quote the shloka. And uh, this is lesson number 12 in the purport, where Prabhupada talks about one God versus many gods. And Prabhupada says, the conception of many gods in the Vedic literatures by the ignorant is completely wrong. And what is the conception? That all are on the same level. There is a concept of many devatas in Vedic literatures, but they do not understand the hierarchy. They don't understand who is the supreme personality of Godhead. Prabhupada says, the goddess of fortune, the powerful demigods like Brahma and Shiva are engaged in the worship of Shivnu, Vishnu or Krishna therefore who can be more powerful than mukunda and thus factually deserve to be called the supreme personality of godhead so the example given is of three vikrama avatar uh, varaha avatar 
and when he humbled Bali Maharaj at that point of time, Tri Vikrama Avtar uh, pierced this universal shell and the water of Karanai Dakshai ocean uh, seeped through uh, when this hole was pierced or the hole was made in the cosmic of uh, this universal shell and that Karanai Dakshai water when it fell, it fell onto the feet of Tri Vikrama and bathing, doing Abhishek of the feet of Tri Vikrama and then it is mentioned, Brahma Ji collected the water emanating from the lot, from the nails of his feet when Abhishek was done. Brahma Ji collected that water and as you know, Lord Shiva collected the same water on his jata, on his head. Like that, there is nothing but Mother Ganges as such is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text number 22. Now there are so many Devtas, but who can surrender to Krishna? So Sutta Goswami says, Yatra nu rakta sahaseva dhira vyopo yadeha dishu sangamuddham vrajanti tat paramaham syamantyam yasmin ahimso pashama sudharmaha. So, who can surrender? Who can take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Yatra anu rakta ha. And then it is mentioned dhira ha. One who is self-controlled. This is a very interesting verse. Please pay attention. Self-controlled persons who are attached to the Supreme Personality Godhead. So first of all, who can take shelter of the Supreme Personality Godhead? Who are self-controlled. And such self-controlled persons can all of a sudden give up the world of material attachment, including the gross body subtle mind, and go away to attain the highest perfection of the renounced order of life in which non-violence renunciation are consequent. Very, very important verse in the purport. I will take this as the last verse for today and we will read out the purport because it is incredible purport that Prabhupada has written here. Uh, redefining some important terminologies of the words that we often use in our day-to-day -day language. First of all, who can surrender to Krishna? Who can surrender to Krishna? Who is self-controlled? And such a self-controlled person can abruptly, all of a sudden, give up the world of material attachments, including the gross body. And a simple example is, it is very amazing how, uh, how suddenly a young man who with a highly passionate mind and aspiration joined a college and suddenly he meets with a sadhu. And within some months and years of association, suddenly develops a desire to give up all his material aspirations and surrender full time to Krishna consciousness. Now for you and I it may not be so amazing because it's almost a daily, everyday scene. But it's very, very surprising for outsiders how it can ever be possible. And these young devotees who suddenly have developed such a spirit of renunciation, they do some amazing feats to be successful in following the path of renunciation. They go through ext uh, extreme degrees they are willing to take any step just to follow the calling of their heart. I will give an example. A good friend of mine, he is a little bulky in size, very heavy, well built. When he came to Krishna consciousness, he started living in our youth center, in one of the center, in one of the, uh, one of the places. Uh, he liked it, he got connected, but he was a very lazy fellow. He was a very lazy fellow, so lazy fellow that he would never get up in the morning program. He loves to eat and because as our responsibility, the devotees will go and wake up. So to hide from the local leader, what he would do? He'll get up at 4 o'clock, he'll go on the terrace. And on the terrace of this building, which is a small building, there was a water tank, which was an old broken water tank, empty water tank. He'll climb up the steps and jump down in the water tank and he'll sleep all through the morning program in the water tank. <laughs> so nobody could find him, where is he? Now, where would you search? This is something really innovative to figure out such a place. Sometimes I remember when you're really tired and it's just the body is not allowing. We have no place in the ashram to take rest. Particularly after 4 o'clock, it's impossible to take rest. So sometimes we feel like, now you may go and fall asleep in your room, but if somebody comes, then there would be high tawa. <laughs> there would be a case study for that day. So that time you feel like, oh, wish there was some, you know, rat hole or some cave which we can go hide, nobody will get to know. So this boy was like this, was not 
enthusiastic, but somehow he was living. So I asked him, I said, so why did you started living in our center? He said, the only thing that I liked about Krishna consciousness was prasadam and I love food. So I moved in only for because I was getting good food. I was not into chanting, reading, hearing. And I said, from that stage, now you're sitting in front of me as a brahmachari. What's your journey of transformation? Then, of course, not going too much details. So while living with the devotees, slowly, slowly, he picked up. In the beginning, he had to struggle a lot. He was really like a Kung Fu Panda story. How Kung Fu Panda, if you have seen that, you know the storyline. How did Panda become a Kung Fu master? Whenever the food was shown to him, he would become highly excited. If the food was at any situation, he was willing to extend his body. It was like something like with this devotee. Slowly, slowly, he picked up, started joining morning program, etc., etc. And suddenly, renunciation developed in his heart. He was uh, very good in his marks. He had aimed to go to abroad, America, and study higher studies, everything. Suddenly, a renunciation. As I was mentioned, self-controlled persons. Of course, I don't know how much self-controlled he was. Of course, he was self-controlled in the sense he did not eat anything outside Krishna Prashadam. And gradually, by the fourth year in his engineering, he became a very, very nice Pakka devotee. And he became, uh, he wanted to renounce. He renounced, he joined, but the parents would not allow. Parents came, took him back uh, from the temple. Now he's in his house. His house was on the second story of the building. And he's wondering what to do. The parents are not giving permission. The parents locked him up in the room. And through the window, they'll give him food. They were worried the son should not run away. And they were confident because the room is locked. They cannot, the son cannot run away. So he was waiting, waiting, waiting. Many days passed away, weeks passed away. Nothing was working out. The parents were not letting him go. Then he decided nothing now, I have to run away. But how do you run away from the second floor? Of course, his house was, his room had a balcony. But what do you do from the second floor balcony? So somehow, someday, he called out to his mother. Mother opened the door for some excuse. He went and stole one of mother's sarees. He stole mother's sari, came back to the room, and he planned, uh, he, he planned the great escape from his parents' home. Um, let me tell you, this guy is 6'5". And he's like a Kali Yuga version of Bhim Sen. If you understand, I repeat, he is like a Kaliuga version of him. He's huge. His muscles are like this huge. It's huge. Bulky, heavy fellow. And you can understand what he's up to with mother's sari. I, I guess you're getting an inner friend. He's not planning to wear mother's sari. He's planning to, you know, use sari as a rope. So around midnight, and right next to his house was a railway track. So his plan was, he had, he had estimated that one train comes around somewhere around midnight, which is like a local passenger train, and he could run and catch and get into the train. So he, that was his plot, the great escape. So he tied the sari to the railing, sari came down, and he thought, now I'm going to go down. Can you imagine? The renunciation, the spirit of renunciation, what a great, all of a sudden. Now he knew for sure, if I become fully dependent on the sari, I'm breaking my bones. Because Sari will not be able to handle his weight. So somehow he was crawling and when he was crawling down like this, I know you are, because he knew he cannot fully depend. That was just a means to scroll, you know, crawl down. Somehow at that point of time, he hit a pot, uh, what you call as plant, pot, you know. And that pot crashed on the ground and made a huge sound. And the father woke up. His father is no less. If he's Bhimsen, he's Bada Bhimsen. His father woke up. He thought something is going on. And his father understood, he saw from the window, my son is escaping. So now father cannot enter the room, the room is locked. So father went out of the house, second floor, and he's running down. And our devotee is hanging between the ground floor and the second floor. He's somewhere on the first floor. Now what, do, what does he do? What can he do? He has only one option, jump. <laughs> because he does not have time to keep crawling down. And if he puts himself, he, if he leaves the shelter of the wall against which he is crawling, the, anyway, Sari is going to break or tear apart. This fellow from the first floor height, he jumped. You know, you understand? First floor, of course, these days, the first floor height is not much, but he's from Gujarat, and this was the old homes, where the first floor height was also quite a lot. He jumped, and then there was second loud noise. First was the no noise of the pot, now the sun has fallen on the ground. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> now the mother also started running, beta, beta. And the, the, the main door was locked. The main door was Somehow he managed to jump off the main door. And because father came in hurry, he forgot the key. 
and father was aged. He was not so fragile or so, you know, athletic that he could jump over the house. He ran back, got the key, and the son is running, the father is running, and beta, beta, and behind father and son, mother is running. Ruk jao, ruk jao. I don't know for whom she's calling Ruk jao. She's worried maybe both are running. <laughs> so, ruk jao, ruk jao. This whole great escape is happening. And the son is running behind the train, and the father is running behind the train. Finally, the son catches the train. And he ends up into Brahmachari Ashram. He's still a Brahmachari is running. And the parents accepted. Okay, man, this guy is not going to come back. If you can go to such an extent, if you develop such a determination, then they understood. And I can tell you, I remember, after one month of this incident, they came. The mother, father came. And they said, we also want to join. <laughs> this is our only son. Now what do we do? I mean, because if our son, he was such a spoiled brat, if our son could take to something so seriously, where they were religious minded, they said it has to be working. And he was, I remember he was pleading to temple president, please give us a space. I'll also open farm community. I'll do this and that and all that. So they stayed and lived in our community for a good amount of time, etc, etc. But that's the point here. So that's the first part of the discussion about how, you know, self-controlled persons the self-control is a prerequisite for being able to develop this kind of a sudden renunciation. It doesn't happen like that if you are, you know, a little lazy or distracted in Krishna consciousness. And to conclude our discussion for today, let's talk about a few terminology which Prabhupada makes in the purport and then we'll pause for today. Text number 23, uh, 22 only. So there are three terms we're going to take a look. Self-control, non-violence, renunciation and independence. So lesson number 13, what is self-control? <laughs> Prabhupada says, ah, this is what it means. Somebody would like to read who is online, please. If you can read out the highlighted portion. Yes, Prabhupada, this is Prasanthi Murali here. Can I read? Yes, please, Mother, go ahead. Self control, I am reading from the book. Ah, so, yeah, please read that highlighted portion. Ah, go ahead, Mother. Self control is actually achieved not by artificially stopping your senses from meeting with God, but by becoming factually attached to do you know yeah this the, huh, this is fine this is the point self-control means uh, engaging you know how to do self-control not like yogi style forcing self-control no by taking to Krishna conscious activities which is the best means of engaging in purifying senses just the word analoid came so I just wanted to make a point here his own Giriraj Maharaj speaks about uh, once Giriraj Maharaj, was Srila Prabhupada, uh, had taken Giriraj Maharaj, uh, not Giriraj Maharaj, it was Shamsundar Prabhu, I believe, or somebody uh, in Boston. They were returning back to Boston. And for, sorry, Prabhupada was coming to Boston for the first time, and Shamsundar, his great Shamsundar Prabhu mentions, I was so amazed that I was the driver, I'm an American, and Srila Prabhupada was telling me, turn left, turn right, and Prabhupada has come for the first time to Boston. And then finally, Prabhupada brought me to a place which was a harbor. Then I understood. And when Prabhupada told me, I first came to Boston. And I saw Prabhupada had some sense of Boston city. And then Prabhupada brought Shamsundar Prabhu to a place which was mentioned, pure unalloyed steel. And Prabhupada said, from here I got the word unalloyed bhakti. That's where you see this word unalloyed senses. You know, what is it unalloyed? Who has heard this word unalloyed in our regular usage? Unalloyed, uncontaminated? That was unalloyed steel. <laughs> From there, Prabhupada said, I got this word. I just want to give you a little history of this word unalloyed. For everything, there is a little history, interestingly. All right, let's go to the another word, which is called as now real non-violence. What is real non-violence? This is lesson number 14. Somebody please read out the highlighted portion here. Someone else, please go ahead. Yes, please. No, I've highlighted now. You're not able to see on the Zoom screen. Go ahead. From anyway. In this world, everyone is envious of this spending. But a perfect from a Paramhansa being completely given up 
to the service of the Lord. He is perfectly not in ways. He loves every living being in relation with the Supreme Lord. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it, mother. So real non-violence is freedom from envy. That is a definition. Fantastic definition. Well, hardly anyone knows real. People think non-violence means not to kill another human being. You know, and we can kill animals and eat it. So that is non-violence. And Prabhupada talks about non-violence in second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, first Prabhupada also. What is non-violence and compassion? Real compassion means not to care for the body but for the soul. Now, what is real renunciation? That's lesson number 15 for today. What is real renunciation? Somebody else read out the highlighted portion, please. Yes, please. Real renunciation means perfect dependence on God. Every living being is dependent on someone else because he is so made. Actually, everyone is dependent on the mercy of the Supreme Lord, but when one gets his relation with the Lord, he becomes dependent on the conditions of material nature. Renunciation means renouncing one's dependence on the conditions of material nature and thus becoming completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord. So renunciation, which means a greater ability of tolerance, uh, to not depend on the conditions of material nature and becoming completely dependent on the mercy of the Lord. Earlier, the renunciation culture was uh, what you call as madhukari. You go out and beg. You may get something, you may not get something. If not, tolerate. That is renunciation. Renunciation is not subject matter of a dress. Somebody wears a self dress is not a renunciate as per to say. Renunciation is a subject matter of consciousness. And one of the foremost quality of renunciation is forbearance. Ability to tolerate uh, the conditions of material nature. And thus becoming completely dependent on the mercy of Lord. That's a point I hear about renunciation. And finally, lesson number 16. What is real independence means? Please read out what is real independence. Somebody else? Yes, yes. Either of you can read, please. Real independence means complete faith in the mercy of the God without dependence on the conditions of the matter. The Paramhansa stage is the highest perfectional stage in Bhakti Yoga, the process of devotional service to the Supreme God. NOI text number 3 Usahan Nishayat Dhairyat Nishayat Confidence Krishna is my Rakshak Krishna will protect me And real independence means To have complete faith in the mercy of the Lord Without dependence on the condition of matter So very very beautiful purpose Actually self-control Non-violence Renunciation Independence There is something uh, for us to gauge our success in Krishna consciousness so far uh, when we can, you know, we, we have the understanding of this terminologies. To conclude with the last verse for today, 23rd verse, where Nasrata Goswami says, describing the glories of the Supreme Person and God, it is almost impossible, but however, I should try as per my realization. Just like a bird can fly into the sky, as per as the ability of the bird, similarly, I, Sutta Goswami, shall try to speak about the Lord as per my ability allows me. In other words, no one can uh, comprehensively or completely describe the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This ends, uh, if, if you'd want to talk about this chapter in two parts, the first part is conversation between Sutta and uh, Goswami and Shonaka Adirishi, and second part where Sutta Goswami will begin to speak about Parashat Maharaj, uh, where there is another set of very, very important lessons. Uh, so far, when I read today morning this chapter, they were all almost 40 lessons I had highlighted and so far we have discussed only 15 lessons which means in the another set of verses there are around 20-25 lessons. That's the reason I said at the beginning of session today they will not rush through with it because if I would have rushed through with it uh, then it's just like I'm reading out 40 lessons. Uh, now because we have a syllabus to cover so sometimes I need to rush it but we are about to come to the conclusion of first canto so I thought why don't we just a little bit relax and not rush through with it. That was a purpose. So to conclude with, uh, we saw about the relationship between the teacher and a speaker, uh, the speaker and the listener, the relationship between guru and disciple, 
uh, how can we achieve full confidence in Krishna consciousness? It begins with full dependence. It begins with full dependence, Shanagati on Guru. Only those who have taken full shelter of the uh, of a spiritual master, only to that no doubts remain, or to that only the absolute nature of the Supreme Lord is revealed. There was a discussion and then the, the quality of a speaker, he should be completely sheltered at the lotus feet of the Lord. And the listener, they should be enthusiastic, they should be eager. And how does that eagerness come? From the simplicity of the heart, I was making the point. And then how to receive glorification? We saw from Sutta Goswami's case, uh, the nature of a humble devotee, when he is glorified, he immediately remembers Vaishnavas and the Supreme Personality Godhead, just like Sutta Goswami did. And second thing, he finds himself to be totally unfit and unqualified in the assembly of sages, in the assembly of Vaishnava, just like Sutta Goswami says, I'm totally unfit to be present here because I'm not even a Brahmana. I'm born of a mixed caste. That was his humble disposition. And uh, after that, there were a few more lessons we saw. Uh, and we saw the last concluding point was how those who are self-controlled can take to Krishna consciousness. And in their heart, all of a sudden, spirit of renunciation develops. And I just gave you one example of a young man you know, coming from a very lazy background and suddenly developing this sudden spirit of renunciation where he was willing to risk his life and he escaped from his parents' home where there was all the comfort and the promise that you get married to a devotee girl and practice. But he said, nothing doing. I am not. I am going to take to the path of renunciation. With that, we can do for today. We have read up to 23 verses of this chapter and the remaining verses will cover next time. With that, thank you all and I hope I have not offended anyone by not completing the syllabus. No one should be upset that you are supposed to complete syllabus. You did not. If in case somebody is upset, please forgive me. Jagaduru Srila Prabhupada ki. Srimad Bhagavatam ki. Any clarification or any comments? Who is speaking? Where are you, mother? Don't see you. Can you see me now? No, My no. Uh, mobile is not. I don't know why. Okay, okay, okay. I'm not able to open it. I just have one doubt. Yes, We're ma'am. talking about Trivikrama today. Yes. Can you just explain, I think, verse 21 regarding Ganges? I was talking about what? that. Yeah, so there it is mentioned how Brahmaji took uh, the water from the toenail of the Lord. That Lord was Trivikrama. That is nothing but another name of Varhadev. Oh, sorry, Vamandev, not Varhadev, Vamanadev, Vamanadev, I'm sorry, Vamanadev, known as Dwarf Incarnation also at times. That story we'll read, I believe, in the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, where other incarnations are discussed. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What else? By the way, who all do we have here? Can we have the cameras on? Still going on? Anything is visible on the stream? Yes. Oh, so those who are online on YouTube.